So, how do we know when it's an ellipse? So, they're the forms of an ellipse. When I expand that, because my denominators are different, what does that mean about the coefficients of my x squared and y squared? Different. But it's plus through, isn't it? They're both positive, they're just different values. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you can tell an ellipse because the coefficient of x squared and y squared Um, and although we had an R squared over there for a circle, and that value changed all the time, didn't it? Um, here has to be one. No matter what, has to be one. And A squared and B squared, the A and B is important. But we'll get there when we wrap up because it all happens. So let's start with the dodgiest of all. <laughs> That is not an ellipse. <laughs> that's, that's a burger bun. <laughs> it's a burger bun. Uh, you reckon that's HK? H has always been what points. HK is going to be the centre, just like it was the centre of the circle. Um, can you imagine this as sort of a sideways parabola? Yeah. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> we sort of would like it to be, couldn't we? Yeah. We would like it to be. Does a parabola, well, even a sideways parabola, does it ever get horizontal? No. Yeah. No, but this definitely gets horizontal when it starts going again. So it can't be two parabolas, but very similar. We do have a. <laughs> one. Directrix and a. <laughs> so let's just say that we've got an axis and then we. Oops, and definitely that's. Point of my yeah, yeah. yeah, clearly. Okay, so let's see where these A's and B's come in. Because depending on them, or depending on how skinny and wide, or how round it is, the distance from here to this biggest point over here is. There's two A's. We'll get to that. Let's just go with A. And the distance from there to there is going to be B. Yeah. So how wide is the ellipse? 2 A. And how tall is the ellipse? 2 A. Easy. So that's A. With a um, Parabola, let's go back to the sideways parabola. We had this point, which was a loci, one of many loci that forms the locus of the ellipse. And we have the distance, let's go locus can be anywhere, I guess. We had a ratio, didn't we? we the, for a parabola, the distance from the foci to that, to the directrix was. The same. Yeah, they were the same. Now what happens is because it's not a parabola, it's similar, as in there's a relationship, but it's more about the ratio of what that length is compared to that length. So we're gonna go that the, the ratio of the point to my focus to the point to my directrix is called E not for this number, it's called the eccentricity. How eccentric it is. How round it is, I guess. E is just the ratio of that distance to that distance. Uh, you know how we have the two strings over here? And depending on where the photo was, it was a different shape. The different value of E will tell you how its shape is. Yeah. So let's not worry too much about it. It's just a constant, and it can be different constants. It could be half, it could be a quarter, it could be not two, not three. Just by looking here, can you see this distance is smaller than that distance? You can just see it, can't you? So for an ellipse, E is between zero and one. If it is over one, then it's not an ellipse. If it is one, 
A. If A is 1, when the length from point to focus is this, it's parabola. Yeah. So when A is 1, it's a parabola. When it's less than 1, it's less than 1. It's bigger than 1, it's tomorrow's less than 1. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good on. Eccentricity. ECC, I have to spell it out as I say. <laughs> a little bit like electricity, but not as well. I don't know. Oh my gosh, thank you. So the E is something that helps us determine where my focus is and where my director is over there with the, um, the string. We had no idea that we needed it, was just to use a string. So as it turns out, the distance from the centre to the focus is a time z. So we need to know what this e is. It's important because a e gives us our focus. And if I go from the centre to the directrix, we need to know where the directrix is. That's A on E. Can you see that that's A? Yeah, so A is from the centre to the point. Remember I said up here E was fractional? Does it make sense that A, how can A times E be smaller than A? It would can because these are fractions. Yeah. And how can A divided by E be bigger than A? Because it has to be a fraction, so it sort of makes sense. And when we get to tomorrow and things are around different ways, yeah, this helps you to confirm in your head whether you've got your rules wrong. Okay, well there's a rule. See these A's and B's? They sort of determine the shape. That determines the shape. So there's a link between this A and the B and the E. And we get E So that's a rule Yes, you need to remember it And I won't give it to you in the test um, So would it be fair to say that The root K squared minus B squared on K equals B Yes Yes Can anybody else see an issue with this Square root thing then? A squared minus B squared. Oh, different. Oh, different. Oh, different. No, dots. Yes, it is. It is. What about the values of A and B? Do we like square reading a negative number? No, thank you, Gabe. So, you know how we've got these two options here? How do you know which option it is? A has to be bigger than B. Simple as that. So, if this was 16 and this was 25, then it has to be the other one. Yeah, because it's 5 squared and 4 squared. Um, A needs to be bigger than B. And the way that I've drawn this, this one is this thing here. The A links to how big the difference in X is. So if A is bigger, then the, the, the point between here and here is bigger, so it's a short, fat ellipse. So if it was um, X minus 3, squared on 4 plus y minus 2 squared on 9 that as an ellipse would be short, uh, sorry, uh, skinny and tall because my a is under the y so the difference in y is bigger because what's um, Three, so the difference in the y is three. So short fat, tall skinny, that's how you know. The a squared or b squared has to be the a squared has to be bigger. Okay. Um, what's happening on the other side? Oh. Same thing. So there are two foci and two. 
two direct receipts. What do you think that, that distance is? AE. So really it's plus or minus AE. So the X value here is the H. And I'm going to go that way AE or that way AE to find my two photons. And this is actually plus or minus because it's minus to find two directories. The book has got a big screen of the directrix is x plus or minus, uh, sorry, x is h plus or minus a on n because it's getting my h and I'm adding in the a on n to find my directrices. I'm sort of against just remembering things by row. If you could just draw this diagram, because it's it's just there, isn't it? You just work it out. You say, well, there's my centre. Well, I've got to go this way and that way. So I'd rather you be able to draw the diagram. The only other thing you need to know is the property. Remember the property of the parabola is the light shining out from the focus was all, all, all from out the same direction. So with an ellipse, see my focus one. And see my focus too. I'm standing here with a torch and I shine it here. What's going to happen here? Hmm. Clearly, that won't work if I'm shining it here. So, yes, it will. So, the, the, the property of the ellipse is that from one focus to the other, it will always reflect to the other one anyway, light, sound, you name it. So that's why we need to position it, because we might be wanting to focus energy or what have you. So we need to be able to position my focus and my direct and all that sort of thing to get the right shape. How many variables have I got? Hundreds. I've got an A, a B, an E, a H, a K, Focus a direct, yeah. So you can pick however many you want, and I can give you, I can give you A, K, E, and go find the rest. Um, and some point that lies on the line. So think of any combination of variables that will be clues, and any number of variables that will be you need to find. But pretty much, if you can draw that diagram. And remember that you should be able to know that. And that's it.